Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of calcipotriol. This work was a collaboration between the Baran Group and Leo Pharma. The paper explores the synthesis of a range of vitamin D analogues. However, for this video, I will focus solely on the synthesis of calcipotriol. Vitamin D is a family of fat-soluble vitamins that share a common secosteroid framework. They have a number of functions within the body, including the regulation of gene transcription, serum calcium levels, and bone homeostasis. They are also highly involved in cell differentiation and proliferation, and also in the function of the immune system. Calcipotriol, which is sold under the name Dovonex, is a synthetic analogue of vitamin D, and is used for the treatment of psoriasis. We can compare this to calcitriol, which is the active form of vitamin D. It has an almost identical structure, with the primary differences being the position of the hydroxyl group, the presence of the cyclopropane ring, and the additional double bond on the side chain. Vitamin D and its active form calcitriol are not obtained through diet, and instead are synthesized in the body from vitamin D precursors. One example of these is 7-dehydrocholesterol. Upon irradiation with UV light, this undergoes an electrocyclic reaction, breaking open the B-ring of the secosteroid framework and forming a triene. This then isomerizes through a sigmatropic rearrangement to form colcalciferol, more commonly known as vitamin D3. This is then oxidized in the liver by colcalciferol 25 hydroxylase and then oxidized once again in the kidney to form calcitriol, which is the bioactive form that interacts with vitamin D receptors. These vitamin D-type molecules can be quite tricky to synthesize and have been attractive targets with over 90 papers published so far detailing approaches to their chemical synthesis. These challenges include the transfusion between the C and D rings, which is thermodynamically unfavorable with respect to the cis-fused ring system. This molecule also has seven stereocenters, all of which must be introduced stereoselectively. And unlike most syntheses we see on this channel, it must be competitive with large-scale semi-synthesis, so ideally it should have a short route, be easily scalable and utilise cheap reagents without the need for harsh reaction conditions, which can be hard to control on the industrial scale. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. We can first disconnect the side chain of the C-ring, which could be introduced using an electroreductive coupling, and the triene system could be produced using an isomerization of a diene. Disconnecting at this alkyne leads to two coupling fragments corresponding to the A-ring and the B and C ring system. The transfused linkage between the B and C rings could be obtained using a semi-pinnacle rearrangement. To form this C-ring, they could utilise a radical hydrogen atom transfer reaction, which could form the carbon-carbon bond between the two alkene moieties. The precursor for this reaction could be derived from cyclohexenone using alkylation, dihydroxylation and methylenation chemistry. The A-ring fragment, on the other hand, could be constructed using a conjugate alkynylation, elimination and reduction strategy of an enone dione precursor. This precursor could be constructed using the de-aromatization of cresol together with an asymmetric borylation oxidation sequence. So let's start with this A-ring synthesis. Paracresol was first reacted with diacetoxy iodobenzene, which activates the hydroxyl group and allows for water to attack at the para position, installing a hydroxyl group and completing the formation of the dienone in a 70% yield. This was then protected using TES chloride and the molecule was taken forward to an asymmetric borylation reaction. This reaction uses a chiral pi box ligand together with copper acetate, which first reacts with the bis-pinacolato diboron to form the borylated copper complex. This coordinates to the ketone and allows for the conjugate addition of the B-pin ligand. This occurs in an asymmetric fashion thanks to the chiral nature of the pi box ligand. The product was not isolated and was instead taken forward and oxidized with sodium perborate to install the hydroxyl group on the face of the ring anti to the O-TES group. This TES group was deprotected with TBAF and produced the diol in a 75% yield with a 94% EE. The stereochemistry of this compound was determined 
using X-ray crystallography, which confirmed the anti-relationship between the two hydroxyl groups. The alkyne, necessary for the Sonnegashira coupling, was then installed using a Grignard reaction. The Grignard reagent of TMS acetylene added to the conjugate position of the enone, reducing the product in a 92% yield with a 20 to 1 DR. This was likely directed by steric hindrance from the methyl group on the bottom face of the molecule and coordination from the hydroxyl group, which guides the reagent to the top face of the molecule. The ketone was then reduced using sodium borohydride to produce the triol in a 91% yield, again with a high stereoselectivity with over a 20 to 1 diastereomeric ratio. In the next step of the synthesis, the triol was selectively protected using TBS triflate. The steric bulk of the TBS group prevented it from adding to the sterically hindered tertiary alcohol, allowing for the selective protection of the secondary hydroxyl groups. The remaining free hydroxyl group was then reacted with thionyl chloride, which acts as an electrophile and activates the oxygen. This then leaves to form an intimate ion pair between the sulfurochloridite and the tertiary cation. The chloride then attacks this cation in an SNI mechanism which retains the stereochemistry. This can then undergo an elimination reaction promoted by pyridine, which acts as a base to deprotonate the hydrogen atom anti to the chloride, and this forms the desired alkene. With the framework of the airing now complete, the TMS group was deprotected using potassium carbonate in methanol and THF. So let's move on to the synthesis of the C and D ring. This started with a bayless hillman reaction of cyclohexanone using DBU as a catalyst. This undergoes conjugate addition to the enone, and the enolate intermediate acts as a nucleophile towards terp-butyl acrylate. Deprotonation of the alpha position eliminates DBU and reforms the double bond, while the ester enolate is protonated and forms the product in an 81% yield. The alkene was then reacted in a Sharpless asymmetric dihydroxylation. In this reaction, a chiral quinidine catalyst guides the cycloaddition of osmium tetroxide to the double bond. This forms a cyclomethylated intermediate which hydrolyzes upon workup to form the cis diol in a 42% yield with an 82% EE. The stereochemistry of this reaction is controlled by the quinidine catalyst which forms a U-shaped pocket which controls the approach of the osmium tetroxide and guides it to the top face of the molecule. This stereochemistry was confirmed by X-ray crystallography. To prevent this diol from taking part in further reactions, it was protected as an acetonide group. 2-methoxypropene was protonated by triflic acid and the resulting cation was attacked by one of the hydroxyl groups. The methoxy moiety is then protonated and eliminated and the oxonium intermediate undergoes intramolecular attack from the other hydroxyl group to form the cyclic acetal in a 97% yield. With this in place, they could then carry out the methylenation reaction. This was performed using the Nystad reagent, which reacts in a similar manner to Tebbs reagent. The ketone is first activated by coordination to diisopropoxy titanium dichloride. The zinc elated carbon then attacks the activated carbonyl and forms the methylene group upon elimination of titanium oxide. With the methylene group now in place, they could then focus on the synthesis of the D-ring. The terp-butoxy ester was first hydrolyzed using lithium hydroxide and the resulting carboxylic acid was then subject to an electrochemical reductive cross-coupling. It is first activated by DIC and reacts with N-hydroxythalamide to form a redox active ester. This redox active ester reacts with a nickel chloride bipyridine catalyst. This causes it to fragment, forming carbon dioxide, thalamide, and leaves a primary radical residing on the substrate. The resulting nickel-1 species then reacts with the coupling partner, which is an iodinated alkene. This undergoes an oxidative insertion to form a nickel-3 intermediate, which undergoes an intramolecular comproportionation reaction to eliminate chlorine and form a nickel-2 species, which is able to react with a radical formed from the redox active ester. The nickel-3 complex formed by this addition then undergoes a reductive elimination to form the coupled product in a 63% yield. The resulting nickel-1 complex then undergoes an electrochemical oxidation to reform the active nickel-2 complex. This uses a reticulated vitreous carbon foam electrode, which is impregnated with silver nanoparticles, which improve the efficiency of the reaction. Taking the product forward, it was then reacted 
in a radical hydrogen atom transfer cyclization. The reaction with iron trist dipivloyl methane and isopropoxyphenyl silane transfers a hydrogen radical to the methylene double bond, producing a tertiary radical. This then adds to the alkene of the alpha beta unsaturated ester, forming the D ring upon the transfer of another hydrogen radical. This produced the product as a single isomer, as the stereochemistry of the precursor only allows the ring to form on the bottom face of the molecule. This is a simplified version of the mechanism, and I've included a link to a paper down below which goes through it in much more detail. Having served its purpose, the acetonide protecting group was hydrolyzed using acetic acid. With the 1,2-diol now revealed, they could carry out a semi-pinnacle rearrangement to form the transhindrandane framework. In this reaction, triphenylphosphine binds to the oxygens, increasing the electrophilicity and promotes a rearrangement. This abstracts one of the oxygen atoms and promotes a 1,2 hydrogen shift together with the formation of a ketone. Overall, this produced the product in a 44% yield and a 5 to 1 DR. It is interesting to note that we saw a similar semi-pinnacle rearrangement strategy in the total synthesis of spirochancelide A, which was also employed to synthesize a transfused ring system between a 5 and 6 membered ring. We can explain the stereoselectivity of this reaction by looking at the orbitals involved. The antibonding orbital of the carbon oxygen bond that breaks in this reaction is in the same plane as the carbon hydrogen bond which undergoes a 1-2 migration. This can only occur from one phase and produces a product where the hydrogen is trans to the axial methyl group. With the carbon framework of the C and D rings now complete, they then installed the triflate necessary for the Sonogashir coupling. The alpha position was deprotonated using sodium HMDS and the enolate was triflated using enphenyl bis trifluoromethane sulfonamide. The two fragments were then coupled using a Sonogashira reaction. Palladium zero undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon triflate bond of the C and D fragment, while copper iodide first coordinates to the alkyne of the A fragment and is then deprotonated by diisopropylamine to form a copper alkyne complex. This undergoes transmetallation with the palladium triflate to form an intermediate where both fragments are coordinated to the palladium. This then undergoes a reductive elimination to produce the product in a 78% yield. With all of the rings now in place, they then needed to install the functionalities on the side chain of the D-ring. The ester was first hydrolyzed using lithium hydroxide and a redox active N-hydroxysalamide ester was formed as before using DIC. This ester was then reacted in another electrochemical reductive cross-coupling, this time coupling it to the cyclopropanated side chain fragment bearing a brominated alkene. With this now installed, they then carried out a semi-hydrogenation of the alkyne using Lindler's catalyst. This promotes the cis addition of hydrogen gas to the alkyne, forming an alkene intermediate, which then undergoes a 1,7 sigmotropic shift, which isomerizes the triene system in a similar manner to that seen in biological systems. With this isomerization now complete, the final step was a simple deprotection using TBAF to produce the target calcipotriol in a 28% yield from the alkyne. Well that brings us to the end of this synthesis, which was an interesting demonstration of the power of electrochemistry in total synthesis. I will be back next week, where we will see how acriflavine fights COVID. <laughs>